So, we take on the topic of productivity uh, which we were discussing in the last lecture and uh, following my you know, completion of discussion on blast furnace productivity, uh, I will try to address modern blast furnace practices and try to wind up today uh, the quanti qualitative part of discussion with regard to the blast furnace and uh, tomorrow onwards I will try to concentrate into the material uh, and energy balance aspect of a modern day blast furnace. Now, if you remember the productivity uh, I have defined in terms of tons per meter cube uh, per day and uh, at the end of the lecture, towards the end of the lecture, I came up with the most plausible definition of uh, or widely accepted definition of blast furnace productivity which is equal to or the rate of production uh, which is a component of productivity because the blast furnace volume is fixed. So, therefore, for a given blast furnace we would say that the rate of production which is a, a measure of uh, the blast furnace productivity is you know uh, given and widely accepted by the expression that it is equal to uh, the total amount of gas which is blown into the furnace divided by the blast rate that means the volume of blast per ton of hot metal okay and that's the rate of production and that's where we finished our last uh, you know yesterday's lecture uh, total volume of air uh, in a day, blown in a day, which is in the unit of meter, meter cube per day and uh, this is the, I would say uh, the volumetric flow rate per ton of metal, volumetric air flow rate per ton of hot metal or this is also the denominator also known as the blast rate of the blast ok. So, this is meter cube per day and this is meter cube uh, per tons of hot metal. So, the unit of R becomes therefore, tons of hot metal per day or simply tons per day. And I said that it is evident that if productivity is directly proportional to R for a given blast furnace, then as R increases productivity increases and R can be increased either by increasing the total volume of air blown in a day. So, that means pumping more and more air as much as possible into the blast furnace divided by the volumetric flow rate uh, air flow rate per ton of hot metal. Now, <coughs> this is going to be determined uh, the numerator is going to be determined by uh, various parameters as we will shortly discuss, but let us first concentrate. So, therefore, it is understood that R can be increased provided the numerator is increased that means, the more volume is blown or the denominator is decreased or by simultaneously increasing the numerator and decreasing the denominator. There are three ways of doing it keeping this fixed increase it keeping this fixed decrease it and or simultaneously increase this and decrease this and that is how you are going to achieve. So, let us first examine that what happens if we try to increase uh, you know the air blow blown into a furnace. Now, you must understand that the in a attempt to increase the air flow rate into the blast furnace beyond a certain um, you know uh, small amount of gas will not be able to overcome the pressure difference. So, to, to able to withstand the pressure difference you have to pump in you know more volume of gas or gas at a very high pressure, but if you try to inject beyond a certain point or blow beyond a certain point in that case what happens particularly there are various phenomena which can take place. Uh, in the granular as well as in the cohesive uh, zone. Okay. So, in the granular zone what happens is uh, very high gas flow rate can first give rise to what is known as fluidization and that you all know particles will tend to be suspended. Particularly the small particles the lighter particles they will tend to float you know dance with the flowing of the and similarly if you further blow extremely high you can imagine the smaller particles and lighter particles can be taken out of the furnace and that phenomena is known as electrician. So, these are uh, you know uh, the two different uh, phenomena which one really one witnesses uh, when uh, attempt to blow too large a gas flow rate uh, you know uh, through the burden. Uh, material in the blast furnace. So, this is a feature of FEA TU feature of granular zone. In the cohesive zone, 
We may have, for example, a phenomena. For, you can imagine that we have uh, all solid particles here, and the fluid is trying to. And in this zone, this is the cohesive zone, zone which is you know uh, the lower stack and the Bosch region. So this is the cohesive zone of the blast furnace. And here, what happens is you have liquid and solid both. So there is the available path to gas flow rate, as I have mentioned, is significantly smaller because you know the low melting point constituents have all fused there. So the pores through which the gas flows are the same passages through which the molten metal and the slag also tries to descend. So if you try to blow, uh, you know, uh, a very large amount of gas, in that case, what happens is there may be a stage when uh, the you know the gravitational force due to which uh, the slag and the metal tends to flow is going to be balanced by the upward drag force of the uh, gas moving upward and as a result of which uh, virtually there will be no descent of the liquid material down or liquid material will cease to flow down and accumulate in the heart itself. That phenomena is known as the loading of the furnace. So, loading refers to the point when the liquid has stopped descending down, liquid has stopped flowing down through the bed of uh, you know solid liquid mixture uh, and it, it happens because of an increased gas flow rate such that the upthrust provided by the drag okay, uh, it counterbalances uh, the gravity uh, on the particle itself. So, <clears throat> and when you blow still a larger amount of gas then what happens is that this liquid can be go travel upward, the gas can carry the liquid upward and then you will find that all these liquids have entered these passages and because this is at a lower temperature, they are going to be all closed, they are going to be sealed because of the solidification of the liquid and in that particular case, the gas will not be able to go up the furnace in any case because the available paths for the gas flow in the granular region has all been choked because of the carrying of the liquid upward because of an extremely high gas flow rate uh, which resulted in their solidification and closing of all the available uh, pores through which the gas flows and that phenomena is known as a flooding phenomena. And you must understand that a stage when no burden material will flow down and nothing is going to be accumulated here then what we will see we call the phenomena as the hanging of the blast furnace that the blast furnace has now something has happened that nothing is really uh, coming down. So, it is hanging in space some sort of a scenario nothing you can charge nothing flows out because something has gone terribly wrong inside the blast furnace itself. So, therefore, it is understood this preliminary discussion tells you that beyond a certain volume the gas flow rate total amount of gas blown into the furnace cannot be increased because there is a dangerous of fluidization, electrician, loading and flooding phenomena occurring leading to the stoppage of iron production or hanging of the blast furnace itself. So, it, it can only get to a critical amount which is enough to withstand the pressure and does not manifest into any of this phenomena and that is perhaps the desirable maximum gas flow rate that one can do. And people will mostly try to operate at that maximum gas flow rate. So, you do not have much maneuverability as far as the top total volume of air blown in a furnace is concerned because you cannot increase beyond the critical level and that critical level uh, most of the furnace you know uh, within minus 5 percent or 10 percent operates uh, in that particular region. So, what is more important in order to get to the value of you know good value of R or a high productivity value by the by the productivity uh, of modern day blast furnaces goes something like 2.5 to 3.5 tons of hot metal per day per meter cube. That is the value. Very advanced countries, very good blast furnace practices about 3.5, inferior blast furnace production is something around 2.5 or 2.6 something like that. So, that is the range of uh, our values uh, seen for uh, many blast furnaces throughout the world. So, therefore, it is understood that in order to maximize productivity. We, what we have to do? We have to reduce the volumetric air flow rate per tons of hot metal. Now, per ton of hot metal 
you can imagine now I can I can give you this suppose everything is same okay and I have a there are two cases and ideally I'm you know suppose I have an ore where I have 80 percent if we 2 3 and 20 percent gang as opposed to an ore where I have 70 percent if we 2 3 and 30 percent gang now you can imagine that in order to if you do a material balance it will come out very clearly but you can make you know some uh, intelligent guess in this particular case because you have less gang material here and more gang material here condition one that the volume of slag in the case b is going to be significantly larger in case b than in case one also for every because the grade of iron is less so therefore it is understood that for every one ton of material more amount of gang material you have to handle in case b than with respect to case b case a so therefore more amount of gang material means you have you know so that if you if you think of producing one ton of hot, hot metal from this and one ton of hot metal from this the volume of the slag is going to be larger in the case of b if the volume of the slag is larger it therefore understood it is understood that this slag is going to be at 450 degree centigrade. So, the sensible heat of slag is going to be larger okay? and that you have to keep the slag molten at that particular temperature you know you will be requiring where from the heat is going to come that heat is going to come by carbon. So, you have to charge more coke and more coke means you have to combust the coke. So, you have to charge more amount of oxygen therefore, more amount of blast. So, in this particular case we would say that it is obvious that everything else is same it is an idealized case okay these are the composition of the ores and it is understood that case b will warrant more amount of volumetric flow rate to produce one ton and it is because of the simple reason that this gang material will contribute to the formation of huge amount of slag you know 1 by 33 percent more slag for every ton of material or maybe a little bit more and then you know we can say that to keep this slag molten we require more amount of heat in the blast furnace and more amount of heat where from it is going to come it is going to come by burning more amount of coke to burn more amount of coke we require more amount of oxygen so therefore more amount of blast so therefore this case will warrant that this denominator is going to be larger and i can say between the two scenarios the productivity everything else remaining in the productivity of a will be larger than the productivity of b so therefore the volumetric air flow rate is a function of the ore composition it is must understand you must understand understand so let us see what it depends on ore composition the grade of the ore i would say ore composition means the grade of the ore how much is and not only the grade of the ore grade of all raw materials okay i should not put in junk into the furnace. So, if I am you know I would like to have more coke you know more carbon in coke then gang material silica ash etcetera. Now, similarly I can say that you can imagine uh, that suppose in one case I am operating uh, you know uh, as I have said that I have 150 degree centigrade and uh, to 300 degree centigrade that is the off gas temperature. In this case it is understood that if everything else is same the volume of the gas produced etcetera is same. Okay? Uh, in that case we can say the top gas uh, in this particular case is taking away less amount of heat from the furnace. So, the heat efficiency is larger because the wastage the amount of heat sensible heat that CO, CO2 mixture is carrying in this particular case is smaller than in particular uh, case here. Now, this amount of heat which is not participated in the reaction process again has been generated okay? because of to, to accommodate the loss we have to charge more amount of coke and that is how this is temperature. So, I am considering a case when everything is same both the cases suppose the hot metal temperature is same the slag temperature is same, but what we find out that 150 top gas is in one case is 150 and in another case is 300 degree centigrade. 
You can say, sir, how this is possible, everything sells. For example, you can imagine that if we charge every same raw material, same size of the furnace, okay, and what we can do is same amount of blast, but what we can do, suppose we can, in one case, we apply a normal pressure difference and in another case we apply a higher pressure difference. A higher pressure difference will slow down the gas, so the heat transfer is going to be more efficient and as a result of which the ascending gas will yield its heat to the descending solid as a result of which manifesting in a lower exit gas temperature. Okay? So, there are various ways of maneuvering it, but let us for the time being suggest, uh, consider that in one case we find that 150 degree, the other case it is 300 degree and you will find that this heat loss essentially tells me that a part of you know uh, the coke which has burned with car of oxygen and that amount of heat uh, has really uh, been lost from the furnace itself and as a result of which we will see that the productivity of the furnace or the rate of production in this particular case will come out to be smaller than this because you know to have this temperature here to sustain this 300 degrees temperature essentially implies more coke has been burned. So, more blast has been required and as a result of which I say that the productivity of A is larger than B for everything else remaining the same. Okay? So, ore composition is an important variable. Uh, the other important uh, variables for example are you know you can, you can suppose you, you can imagine that uh, uh, I have a blast here. Through the blast also, blast is not at room temperature. The blast is at higher temperature. Okay? It is injected at 900 degree, 1000 degree, 1100 degree centigrade. So, through the through blast, I am also fulfilling the heat requirement of the furnace itself. So, therefore, you must understand that if you, if you, if you put in higher blast temperature, if you apply, in that case what happens is, I am supplementing a part of the heat which otherwise would have been to have to produce by binding of coke itself. So, if the blast is heated at a temperature smaller, the blast itself is to be heated at that particular temperature because here you know you are increasing, you can imagine the blast you are putting it at 25 degree centigrade and the blast is going out at 300 degree or 150 degree centigrade. So, the blast gets heated and the blast itself consumes a lot of heat. So, higher the blast temperature, lesser is going to be the coke required. Okay, because a part of the heat is being supplied by the blast itself and higher is lower is the coke required, lower will be the amount of oxygen required to combust the coke to produce the heat itself. So, the blast temperature is an important variable. We can list many on which we will do a heat and energy mass balance of blast furnace from the next class onwards and we will see how these things are going to be uh, manifested uh, you know in the blast rate that part ton of hot metal because our objective always would be you know volumetric to reduce this volumetric air flow rate and we will find out that what are those parameters in the blast furnace you know from a quantitative standpoint which will lead to a minimum possible value of the volumetric air flow rate per ton of hot metal. So, blast temperature is an important variable. You can imagine that if I have everything same then you know two different one is a giant blast furnace the others are three different smaller blast furnaces. Okay? And if I want to keep everything same, the productivity of three smaller blast furnaces are going to be smaller than one giant blast furnaces. It is because of the simple fact that through the wall of the blast furnaces, we get heat removed and heat removal from our knowledge of elementary transport phenomena, we know is a function of surface area to volume ratio. Okay? That the surface area to volume ratio in the case of smaller furnace is much, much smaller. So, therefore, we can say much, much larger sorry that we can say that in the case of smaller furnaces, we will have more amount of heat loss than with respect to so one big furnace. So, three furnaces having similar capacity will contribute to more amount of heat loss and therefore, necessitate that we burn more amount of coke giving rise to volumetric uh, increased volumetric air flow rate per ton and that is what is the re reason that why you know industry is trying to uh, move towards uh, you know giant blast furnaces of the size of 5000 meter cube or so. Unfortunately, we cannot go beyond uh, that you know because you know either increase in diameter further or increase you know beyond the length height of 35 meters because of several constraints in terms of raw material quality 
raw material strength as well as the you know compressor requirement etc which i have mentioned already but nevertheless nobody would you know in industry given you know its monetary resources will not like to have yeah, you know smaller blast furnaces particularly in india for example jsw big steel companies like tata steel a tata steel in 1970s they used to have blast furnaces uh, something like only you know 1000 meter cube through uh, 1200 meter cube and so on and so forth but today all the new blast furnaces which have come in jamshedpur or you know in their kalinganagar works are massive blast furnaces and it is because of the simple fact that bigger the size of the blast furnace the surface area to volume ratio becomes smaller as a result of which heat loss is smaller heat loss smaller means what we have to require we will require less amount of coke so it is a bigger furnace is therefore a, you know a step towards uh, green iron making i would say and smaller coke rate will necessitate that we have smaller volumetric flow rate per ton of hot metal and therefore because that oxygen whatever you are supplying is doing only one job it is reacting with carbon and producing carbon monoxide it is nowhere else it is taking part directly eh? in the raceway region it is it is here that all the oxygen that you apply burns with coke and produces carbon monoxide so therefore since coke rate is less so therefore it is understood that less amount of oxygen will be necessary and as a result of which uh, we will see that <coughs> we will have bigger blast furnaces or reducibility is also a big factor the kinetics of reduction is faster if the ore is more reducible that's why the engineering material you know if i say that fundamentally speaking uh, if you have uh, uh, you know sinter as a, as opposed to a lump ore then the sinter has better reducibility and therefore sinter reduces you know uh, lesser volume of flow so because a small amount or relatively small amount of carbon monoxide concentration will be able to reduce the sinter itself because of the large exposure of the surface area better porosity and so on and so forth but in the case of lump ore you will require an intense carbon monoxide concentration so that carbon monoxide can diffuse uh, because the difference in carbon monoxide concentration between the bulk and the surface determines the rate of transport as you will know uh, the concentration difference is the driving force for mass transfer and therefore we can see that when you have better engineered raw material like sinters and pellets which have you know um, much higher porosity not as dense as the lump material and they provide good gas solid contact good diffusion higher rate of diffusion and higher rate of extraction so therefore a less intense carbon monoxide is necessary and as a result of which what happens we require less coke to be burnt and as a result less oxygen is necessary and which leads to finally the volumetric air flow rate stack gas injection for example of carbon monoxide huh? uh, as well as some little part of hydrogen and uh, in the gas that will maintain that I could, you know a solid particle is now going to be surrounded by more intense reducing gases because you have put in carbon monoxide gas and as a result of which what happens the reduction rate is going to be further increased because the concentration difference as i said between the surface and the bulk is going to be now significantly larger with stack gas injection so stack gas injection creates a more intense reducing environment increasing the kinetics of reduction and increasing thus the productivity productivity increased means your coke rate has gone down per ton of hot metal the coke rate has gone down and that is you know uh, of concern to us because we are trying to burn less and less fuel fossil fuel such that the you know, carbon dioxide volume of carbon dioxide produced on a daily basis in the exit gas is much smaller and so on and so forth now these are the reasons for that modern blast furnace practices have evolved uh, uh, over the years in the last uh, i would say 40 50 years tremendously and there are now for any you know modern day blast furnace there are certain sacrosanct uh, procedures or approaches uh, that is incorporated into the blast furnace iron making practice and i want to you know i have already given you an idea that one such practice is construction of bigger blast furnaces okay rather than small blast furnaces so particularly integrated steel plants so move towards that so all the points that i am not now going to list eight points i think if i remember them all correctly uh, when i list they are you know an integral part of today's iron making practice and everything that i am going to list 
is concerned with one single aspect that how to reduce the coke rate and you must understand when we were students, we were, the professor used to write the coke rate in Indian blast furnaces are about 800 kg per tons of hot metal and today we have somewhere around 350 to 400 kg depending on which plant you are talking about per tons of hot metal. That is the kind of and this is Q sub C, the coke rate. So, a significant improvement in the last 50 years have taken place, you know, in terms of reduction in the coke rate and all these are directly related with the reduction in the volumetric. The blast rate has also accordingly gone down and this has attributed to a higher and higher productivity. So, any step that you take to reduce the coke rate will manifest in terms of increased productivity or in other words, any step that you take to increase the productivity will manifest in a reduction in the coke rate. And we now examine the various, uh, you know, uh, <coughs> key practices in a modern day blast furnace which are aimed in reducing uh, the blast rate as well as <coughs> the coke rate of a furnace. So, point one I have discussed. So, modern day blast furnace practice. So, one I have discussed is a larger blast furnace and I want you to visualize whatever I list in terms of the final expression okay, that how does this really manifest in reducing the value of the denominator which is of uh, you know, concern to us and larger blast furnace because of as I said surface area to volume ratio is smaller. Okay. So, that volume is bigger, but correspondingly surface area is smaller and the smaller blast furnaces it is other way around. So, the heat loss from the furnace is more in the case of smaller furnace heat loss uh, per furnace uh, is going to be much smaller in the case of larger blast furnaces and as a result of which what happens a larger blast furnace is thermally more efficient than a battery of smaller blast furnaces and this manifest this thermal efficiency manifests that you have lesser coke rate per ton of hot metal and as a result of which uh, lesser <coughs> blast volume per ton of hot metal. All blast furnaces today are going to be operated with higher blast temperature. Again there is a limit uh, to which the blast can be increased blast temperature because you know how the blast I have told you that uh, in stoves uh, on gas and on uh, blast how the stoves are operated, stoves are very tall structures and there is a limit, there is heat extraction limit you know limitation and that possibly is not does not allow us to put in you know something more than 1300 degree centigrade, uh, uh, 1300 Kelvin uh, of the uh, 1300 degree centigrade uh, with the blast temperature. So, 1200 is a very decent uh, blast temperature that we can say uh, we, we can consume and that uh, we can say 1200 Kelvin. This is and we will do many many sums with regard to people consider that this is uh, a sectorcent uh, temperature if the temperature of the blast is lesser than this 1200 we will see that why the, for, where from this 1200 figure has come. Okay. Uh, in that case, if it is lesser, so if the blast is injected at about 1000 degree, then the blast is going to consume heat from the furnace itself and that will manifest in an increase in the coke rate because you have to provide that additional. On the other hand, if the blast temperature is greater than 1200 Kelvin, in that case what we will see the blast is going to contribute and manifest in reduction of the coke rate itself. And as I said that we cannot of course go you know a very high value because of uh, the heat transfer limitation in stoves, etc. Now, as far as blast temperature heating, preheating is concerned, we have metallic blast heater. These are used in and stoves. MBH is metallic blast heater, and these are basically uh, you know uh, co-current uh, tubes through which the hot blast furnace gas flows, and then the surrounding cold air flows, and the heat exchange takes place. So, there are zigzag you know condenser kind of a coil okay, 
pipe structure metallic hot blast and these are basically if you look at the cross section you will see like this. So, the inside may be uh, the blast furnace hot blast furnace gas and outside may be air okay? and as it flows there is a heat exchange takes place, but this is not very efficient. If you want to have high temperature stoves is the way to go. Okay? Metallic blast heaters are good enough for a much smaller blast temperature of 600, 700 degrees centigrade and so on and so forth. So, higher blast temperature, higher and higher blast temperature people have, are trying to use and this higher blast temperature, they want the blast to supply heat and thus replace the part of the coke. Okay? And number three, we can have high top pressure in the blast furnace. This also I have mentioned. You must understand that the moment you apply high top pressure, you are injecting at the you know, suppose at the same pressure here. So, the pressure difference delta P, delta P is going to be smaller when you apply a high top pressure. And this high top pressure already, uh, I hope you know, I have uh, told you right in the beginning, I think second or third lectures to look at the net and see the constructional features of the blast furnace top. Uh, which is uh, you know horrendously complex uh, mechanical structure and performs very vital function in terms of providing complete sealing yet allowing material to be transported or fed into the blast furnace. And uh, in that if you want to have again a high top pressure uh, kind of an arrangement uh, then it gets even still further complex and I hope you have had a chance to look into uh, you know uh, go through net and see that how does a modern day blast furnace stop really uh, looks like the, at least the schematically at least schematically so that you know which has a uh, charge distribution arm also uh, feeding mechanisms also apply an application of uh, the means to apply height of pressure at the blast furnace. How high may be about close to 1.8 atmosphere about 2 atmosphere 1.9 atmosphere and some of something of that and where here yeah, depending on the size of the blast furnace it is diameter this could be 7 atmosphere okay, or 7 bar. 8 bar, 10 bar, something like that. So, the moment you put in high pressure, what you are basically doing, you are reducing the delta P, the pressure difference between the inlet and the outlet. And as a result of which what happens, the gas slows down now relatively. Okay? As the gas slows down, then what happens is the gas has a, the contact time between the solid and the liquid increases, solid and the gas increases. And as a result of wh which what happens, the ascending gas will be able to now yield its heat to the descending solid and as a result of which the off gas temperature is going to go down. So, I can say that height of pressure will lead to a lesser wastage of heat in terms of the sensible heat of the you know uh, of gases and as a result of which it will require lesser uh, volume of oxygen to be blown or lesser amount of coke to be used part ton of hot metal and this height of pressure is going to manifest in terms of increased uh, productivity. Similarly, oxygen enrichment of the blast. And how much? We can do something like 2 percent oxygen uh, enrichment. Okay, before I think I conclude on height of pressure, you must also understand that height of pressure can cause this reaction, the gasification reaction. Okay, so to go from right to left because you have one volume of gas, you have two volume of gas. So, the moment you have applied, there will be more chances of indirect reduction taking place in the blast furnace rather than uh, direct reduction or the gasification reaction. So, the kinetics of gasification reaction can be slowed significantly by the application of height of pressure and this as I have indicated is a strongly endothermic reaction. So, therefore, if you can reduce the extent of endothermic reaction okay, and what you are going to see that you are going to see lesser amount of silicon in the hot metal, you can see lesser amount of uh, gasification reactions and lesser amount of heat being lost in this processes endothermic processes and as a result of which your thermal requirement of the blast furnace will now go down necessitating a smaller coke rate and in turn smaller blast rate. Coming to oxygen enrichment, so 2 to 3 percent oxygen in the blast could be. So, you have air and then you have, 
So, normally air has 21 percent as you all know oxygen roughly. So, we can make it 23 percent, 24 percent and so on and so forth and as a result of which what happens is that the significantly you can have more you know improved uh, blast furnace productivity and simple argument is that the nitrogen dilution effect. Okay? So, now if this particle has been surrounded by x volume percentage of nitrogen with oxygen enrichment that x is going to be smaller than x because I have made it made the air not 21 is to 79, but I have made it 23 is to 77. So, therefore, the nitrogen dilution effect is going to be smaller. So, the kinetics of reduction reaction is going to be improved and also the volume of the reducing uh, exit gas is going to go down because there is less amount of uh, nitrogen. Okay? So, nitrogen is going to which is inert which does not do anything, but which takes away a lot of gases and in this case you must understand that you know you cannot do an existing blast furnace cannot be although we have technology to produce oxygen you cannot put in directly 100 percent oxygen into the furnace and there is going to be disastrous consequences. Okay? So, that is why while oxygen enrichment of the blast has been successful an oxygen blast furnace has not yet been uh, successful on a commercial scale and people are trying to do you know work uh, that uh, how you can really uh, use uh, oxygen judiciously and that one way of doing it is by oxygen enrichment. So, 2 to 3 percent of oxygen enrichment can increase the productivity of the furnace, reduce the coke rate as well as <coughs> reduce the blast rate. Now, 5 is the coal dust injection and stack gas injection. Reducing gas injection through stack, that is what is stack gas, not just any gas injection in stack. When you say stack gas injection, we essentially mean injection of reducing gases, so a mixture of these gases could be reformed gases, you know, you can take methane, you can burn methane, produce carbon uh, monoxide and hydrogen, and you can put that okay, and <clears throat> inside the furnace itself. And when you do coal dust in the coal injection is done through the tuer itself. It is a very challenging, it is so easy to say, but to inject coal, put coal in coal dust into the blast and trying to put it into the furnace. Many a times, you know, the coal powder really backflows uh, and it becomes a horrendously complex engineering task in order to inject, but nevertheless there are uh, now established technologies and that allows us to inject coal like 70 kg per ton of hot metal, 120 kg per ton of hot metal that kind of a value even I think 300 kg per ton of hot metal uh, you know <coughs> uh, has been um, not 130 kg per ton of hot metal has been achieved uh, through as coal injection. Now, this coal dust injection there is a uh, we do not want to use too much of coal because you know as I have indicated 300-350 kg is going to be necessary to maintain the bed permeability. So, if you are using 400 you know target is 400 then at the most you can use 350 kg coal and 40 or 50 kg of coal dust to compensate you know uh, to make it around 400 kg or something like that. So, the coal the coke and coal need not be mixed as they, they are both carbon constituents okay? but since there is a huge amount of price difference between coke and coal okay? we can see that any effort to inject coke, coal and trying to replace coke will manifest in a reduced cost of uh, production, but we must understand that coal will contain lot of uh, slag material, okay, lot of uh, waste material like it will contain uh, you know because it is not an enriched fixed carbon is smaller, gang material like ash etcetera is much higher. So, as a result of which too much of uh, coal injection is not uh, desirable also okay, and that is why we never try to go you know 200 or 300 kg, no those kind of figures are not desirable here because uh, the coal has lot of uh, ash material or lot of gang material which can contribute to a larger uh, increase uh, in the slag volume uh, jeopardizing the whole objective of coal injection making the furnace uh, blast furnace uh, less you know efficient. So, we must understand that that higher blast temperature there is a limitation up to which we can go because of processes etcetera. Oxygen enrichment we cannot do because we are not in a position to use 100 percent oxygen in the flash process. Similarly, coal injection also if you do beyond the threshold level because of slag volume increase etcetera. 
So, some part of the coke, expensive coke can be replaced and also we must understand the moment the coal dust injection is done, the raised to a adiabatic temperature or raised to a temperature is going to go down because of the simple fact that you are injecting solid material, that solid material has to absorb sensible heat and also it has some gang material which will become the, uh, produced during combustion. So, as a result of which there may be a drop in the raised to a temperature with coal injection. So, when you do coal injection, you simultaneously do oxygen injection also and that purpose of that oxygen injection is to the moment you do it compensate the raised way temperature. These are very interesting and challenging engineering tasks actually and therefore, uh, and this coal because it is coal dust it has very small surface area. So, the combustion efficiency is much larger. Okay? It vanishes in no time itself upon injection into the system. So, combustibility is higher and as a result of which heat liberated, heat liberated is almost instantaneous. And when coal dust is injected with oxygen enrichment, okay, you can get desirable results in terms of adjust the two in such a way that the raised to a temperature really does not change to any significant extent. Humidification blast is also another When you have humidified the blast, what is essentially ind indicate is that the hot blast which is coming into, uh, uh, you know, is entering the bustle pipe. Prior to that, you inject steam into the blast furnace uh, gas. Okay, and when you inject blast furnace gas, uh, steam into the blast furnace gas, and this steam upon its discharge into the raised way, what happens is becomes superheated steam, and this because there is carbon which is available. And this gives rise to this is the popular water gas reaction, which we have studied in grade 10 actually. That is the consequence of humidification of the blast. Now, this reaction is again an endothermic reaction. So, if you do humidification of the blast, you have to do oxygen enrichment so that you can compensate for the heat which is consumed by this endothermic reaction with a net result that the raft is not. Uh, changing, uh, you know, uh, change it uh, widely, and that in that perspective, it is very important to know that the raft has to be maintained within plus minus 10 degrees, 15 degrees, regardless of rainy season or winter or summer days. You know, if the raft fluctuates, in that case, you cannot control blast furnace. Raft is the heart, I can say. You know, everything is important, but maintaining a constant raft throughout the process, irrespective of session, you know, seasons, etc., and raw materials uh, by maneuvering. Uh, these parameters holds the key to successful operation of a blast furnace for a prolonged period of time producing metal and slag of consistent quality around the year. So, therefore, humidification blast when you do, so this is a connotation with regard to particularly the rainy season when you will see that the you know the air as such uh, will contain lot of uh, moisture and if you just do not take care of that. In that case, what happens? Any fluctuation, seasonal fluctuation of moisture in the blast will lead to a fluctuation in the raft, and as a result of which uh, the blast furnace will start to behave very erratically. Okay? And the prime objective is to control the blast furnace, and there are there are various ways of coal dust injection, humidification of the blast, or dehumidification, or oxygen enrichment. All these things can be combined together and you know uh, to produce uh, to ensure that raft is uh, does not vary beyond a certain allowable uh, limit. So, this, this is an advantage why we do humidification despite the fact that it is an endothermic reaction consumes heat because it produces hydrogen. Okay? The result of, so for every mole of carbon we are getting, so if you combust carbon, 2 moles of carbon is required for 1 mole of oxygen to produce 2 moles of CO. Okay? So, you can see carbon is to CO2, the reducing gas generation is 1 is to 1, but for every mole of carbon here we get 1 plus 1, 1 mole of CO and 1 mole of H2. So, that means 2 moles of reducing gases and hydrogen is known to be a much faster, much better superior reductant than carbon monoxide because the size of hydrogen atom is smaller. So, it can diffuse through the pores and crevices or cracks into the solid and reduce iron ore. So, the kinetics of reduction gets significantly improved and also the reducing environment in the blast furnace is far more intense with the moisture injection. But if you inject too much of, if you become greedy and try to inject too much of 
moisture. In that case, what happens? The raceway region will become cold because of this endothermic reduction reaction and then we will not see the advantage rather you will be in a very disadvantageous position as far as the blast furnace operation is concerned. So, I think seventh point is the lime dust, lime dust injection. When you use coal dust, okay, because the coal liberates an enormous amount of gang material or ashes, uh, it is simultaneously people try to use some amount of lime dust injection also. The moment the dissolution of lime is a mass transfer controlled phenomena. So, the moment you reduce the particle size of lime, what happens is that the reactivity of lime increases significantly and it can react with various constituents like silica, sulfur, etc. So, coal injection, so whatever you know product, residual product which is generated following the combustion of coal, coal in the raceway region which tends to be advected upward by the flowing gas, if you are simultaneously injecting lime powder into it because lime is basic and those constituents ash etc are acidic in nature, there is a great possibility that within this particular region itself those powders can actually because of their enhanced surface area, because of their enhanced reactivity can react with the coal ash and as a result of which the slag can be uh, generated. So, this is a way and also we must understand that a part of the lime can be now put in not through the top, but from here itself and that you know by increasing the blast temperature little bit you can you know put the right amount of do the heat economics or the heat balance studies. So, you can inject the improve the blast temperature, increase the oxygen uh, enrichment a little bit 1 percent or 1.5 percent and then you put in coal as well as lime such that the overall thermal balance is maintained leading to the constant ratio temperature and that will give you better operating efficiency that you will be having. You know a slack formation uh, which will take into account all the impurities which are present in the coke and released as a result of coal and released as a result of combustion in the raceway region. So, lime dust injection is also an integral component of the modern uh, blast furnaces and the final point also which I have uh, engineered raw material. And in this context I have already indicated that we have pellets, sinters, etc., which are charged into the blast furnace okay? and this materials uh, provide better bed permeability. So, the gas can does not get channel, channel and when I have talked about fluidization and electrician there is this phenomena also sometimes occur in the channeling. Because if, if you have different you know particle size closing the passage here, passage here then the gas possibly will not try to go this way. No, the gas will go something like this and this and this and this that is the way. So, that is the channeling effect rather than the gas rising through the entire cross section of the burden particularly in the granular zone. Uh, the gas is going to go through channeling. So, engineered burden material means you can control the bed permeability, you can control the reducibility of the material, you can control the surface area and physical characteristics that is what we mean and when you do use sinter etcetera you have done some reduction outside the furnace because there is some degree of metallization and as a result of which what happens is you have a superior material that is charged into the blast furnace and no blast furnace today when we were students soon I repeat again most of the blast furnaces used to be fed with you know the sintering sinters and pelletizations have just started uh, in India and most of the blast furnaces uses good proportion of uh, lump ore, but today a great part of the lump ore has been replaced by sinters and pellets because they give us those ensure those conditions in the blast furnace which are necessary you know to improve the kinetics which are uh, necessary in order to improve the coke rate which are necessary in order to blow lesser and lesser volume of gas per ton of hot material. So, all these features may be all 
or at least some of them, they are now the trends in the blast furnace uh, iron making. And most of the new plants which, have, which are coming up or which have come up in the last 20 years or so have adopted to one or many of these technologies, okay, which I have listed here. So I think I have given you now a good background of uh, the blast furnace operation and I don't want to go anything beyond this uh, for an undergraduate level course and I think uh, given this background you should be now able to deal with you know you have some insight and you can talk you know uh, you can study combustion okay how does the solid liquid solid gas contact how does combustion takes place the physics of combustion you can study you can study physics of glenural flow you can study uh, for example <coughs> Uh, the reduction kinetics, uh, the model of uh, you know uh, the kinetics, uh, which I have of course uh, very briefly mentioned uh, in terms of uh, overall rate constant, etc. So many advanced topics of the blast furnace, the aerodynamics in the blast furnace, all these advanced topics you are now set. You can study on your own, or you can go and take an advanced level course on any of these topics that I have mentioned. Now the time has come in order to go in, you know, look at blast furnace from a quantitative standpoint. And in the next lecture, next four or five lectures, we will develop uh, uh, a, um, uh, you know, a formalism to tackle uh, the blast furnace from a quantitative framework. We will say that our objective would be that given you know, if you say that we want to produce one ton of hot material, one ton of metal from a given ore, you tell me how much of oxygen in the blast will be necessary, how much of off gas will be produced, okay? how much of slag is going to be generated, what should be the coke rate, these are the parameters. Okay? So part ton basis, the product is fixed, one ton of hot metal with a composition we know 4.5 percent car carbon or 1 percent silicon will give the composition, will give set the target that I want to produce one. Uh, uh, ton of hot metal okay, uh, which contains 4.5 percent carbon, 1 percent silicon and so on and so forth. This is the composition and you tell me that what kind of a feed material and if I, if I say that if I have this kind of a feed material which is available to me, you tell me if I use that feed material and my target is to produce 1 ton of hot metal, then what should be the coke? rate of the blast furnace? What should be the blast rate of the blast furnace? What should be the exit gas composition? and so on and so forth. All these parameters we will be calculating through a framework which many of you may have heard will culminate into the discussion of what is known as the wrist diagram. So we conclude here and I think uh, we will uh, you know, continue our discussion uh, on this topic uh, in tomorrow.